we all have that one book that sticks out as the book that we ended up taking taking the longest to finish and there there can be n number of reasons why it took so long to to, to finish that one book ranging from uh, oh it was such a drag to oh i want to get every morsel of information out of that book i hope latter is the case with you uh, and for me that book is one one river by wade davis it's a non fiction book i almost only read non fiction it's it's around explorations and discoveries in the amazon rainforest but it is not what it seems like uh, also there is another photographic version of this book the lost amazon uh containing pictures from mostly from 1930s through the early 1940s but i'll i'll, I'll come to this uh, part later now <clears throat> what what is this book all about and why did it take me this long apart from the fact that it's this thick now this book is about the journey of two men uh, a mentor and his student but th- uh, these journeys take place at separate uh, times one journey takes place in late 1930s to early 1940s and uh, then the student follows in his master's footsteps in about 1970s essentially the book is about uh, richard evans schlutz an ethnobotanist and anthropologist a scientist he wore many hats so in 1941 this man richard evans schlutz took a leave of absence from harvard university and disappeared into the nether amazon of colombia so this this leave of absence it was supposed to last about 6 months a semester's time that's that's that was the plan that was uh, richard's plan to spend 6 months in the amazon rainforest for his for for a project of his and instead of 6 months this guy ended up spending 12 years in amazon rainforest he lived in that forest for 12 long years alone with uh, the tribal people with other uh, people from his profession he became one of them uh, people who who we call indians the the various the thousands of tribe that live in that forest or that lived in amazon rainforest back in the uh, 30s 1930s and reading again from uh, the book the snopsai the world's leading authority on the hallucinogens and medicinal plants of the region richard evans schlutz returned after 12 years of traveling through south america in a dugout canoe mapping uncharted rivers living among local tribes and documenting the knowledge of shamans now among the various projects that he had uh, his biggest contribution was towards uh, the second world war helping his country win the war uh, the biggest project that he was involved in was rubber plant in amazon extracting rubber from from uh, the trees in amazon and then shipping it out to uh, the government or to the factories that that uh, took that rubber and made a uh, tires from them or other things various other things that run an economy or that supplied important things uh, to support the war the second world war that was one of his chief contributions outside of <coughs> outside of his, his own profession uh, now 40 years or 30 years later uh, wade davis the author of this book he sets off on a journey to follow in the footsteps of his mentor uh, he lands in bogota that is in amazon <clears throat> so he goes with a partner of his 
are and they follow the tracks not lit- the literal tracks but the journey that richard evans uh, schlutz documented and whatever he wrote he took pictures uh wade davis followed his mentor he had his own projects going on but then there are parallels you know the, this this book is not divided into two uh, parts like first there is richard evans schlutz and then there is wade davis no it keeps on uh, switching from like one chapter or two chapters in a row are on richard evans schlutz from his perspective it's it's way davis perspective but uh, some chapters are covering his journey then the next chapter or the next next chapter is covering way davis journey so it keeps on oscillating alternating between uh, the journeys of these two now why i like this book so much because i have read travel books you know but unlike other travel books which also focus uh, on anthropology or study of culture one river does not become overbearing no unlike unlike a book uh, like uh, snow leopard uh, it's it's one of the classics unlike snow leopard one river does not feel like going off the rails or that you're reading something that you did not expect to read or you did not sign up to read which is what happens with uh, snow leopard in a good way but then it goes off the rail sometimes it goes on a different tangent one river does that one river goes in different directions but it somehow that that glue that holds everyone together it's you can feel it at all times it's not just a travel book there is enough culture there is enough philosophy in one river the book perhaps even more as compared to again let's say a snow leopard but it still is very much like a travel book because the the culture uh, the the cultural and philosophical study is wonderfully interwoven with the travel log which is which is not the case with most travel books and then i uh, come back to this this photographic journey now these uh, this this photo uh, this book uh, contains pictures that were taken by richard evans schlutz back in 1930s so once you have once you are done with this book you are th- th- this is going to be a delight for you you are going to love every bit of it there is a lot of text also it's kind of a condensed version of the original book uh when it comes to text but there are so many pictures and great stories behind those pictures uh so yeah that is it i wanted to share this experience with you i read this book about 3 years ago so i don't remember a lot from it but enough i remember enough 